Please welcome Azra. She's a QA star here. Four questions for you. The first one, what are you looking for in a candidate when you, let's say, HR, they did their part, they did the phone screening, and now it's your turn. And when candidate is coming on a face-to-face -face interview, so can you tell what are you looking for? Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Thrive Market. I know you already did it, but just welcome again. Um, what am I looking for in a candidate would be, um, most candidates think that you have to get the answer right. It's all about like the end result. But if you don't know the question, and even if you attempt to get there and like can show that you have the enthusiasm and tenacity because our company is based on, uh, on four principles. One of them is tenacity. So if you're tenacious enough, we definitely go ahead and, and look at you as a prospective candidate for the company. All right. <laughs> What's your favorite interview question? Well, there are not just one of them, but uh, one of the most important ones for me is why Thrive Market? I know we definitely uh, take this question very lightly when you come into the interview and and it's I for me It's a very important question when you come into a company for an interview And you do not know their business model or you don't understand what they're working on and how you can relate to the company then it's definitely uh, a, a questionable choice to be a part of the company, right? Um, the other one of my other favorite questions would be um, how, how do you think you should go about with automation? Like if you are the first person to set it up, then what are you expecting? How would you go about automating as in like which cases do you think you should pick up first versus which would you leave as a manual debt to like cover later? Yeah. Good question. Uh, and third one, tricky. What is the red flag when you interview for candidate? Well, I think we just discussed some of them already. Um, one of them definitely top one being if you cannot align with the business values and, and the company that you're coming to interview with is, uh, is a red flag. And the second one is it's genuinely okay to say I don't know. Like if you don't know something in an interview, it's definitely okay to say I don't know but I'm willing to learn. Then like try to like walk through something that you do not have an understanding of. Cool. Uh, can you tell a little bit resume tips and hints, like when any advice? What are you looking for in the resume? If you're looking for automation engineers, obviously the first thing is can you start from ground up? How many times have you actually built a framework? How much knowledge do you have out of, of automation? And uh, what are you doing in your current role that could contribute towards your future company, right? So that's one of the uh, one of the most important things in your resume to highlight that in your current company you have been accomplishing all these things, and this is what you can contribute to the other company. And uh, something else that we definitely look in in the resume is how good you are at communication. Uh, no matter how many process you put in place to make everything go smoothly, if you're not communicating with the team, that's where everything starts falling apart. So if you are good communication and you can deliver results, uh, it, that's what you, it needs to be in your resume to like show that. How about the uh, how about the manual tree or like not strict to QA automation engineers? I think manual QA uh, is a little tricky, but I think most of us definitely go with like um, if you have written test cases, how do you maintain test cases? Uh, one of, I mean, I know we already covered that question, what is one of my favorite interview questions, but uh, if I'm interviewing someone who's a manual QA, one of the questions that I ask is, I'll just give you a blank field uh, of an email or like whatever, and I would ask you, how many ways can you test this one field? The more number of answers you can come up with, it just shows how many ways you can think of, because manual job is basically thinking outside the box, right? So uh, that would be one of the things, but for a manual QA, I think mostly it's got to do with test plans, test cases, communication definitely, and um, how much do you think, like what, do you, what is your approach to being a manual QA? Most people's understanding of manual QA is clicking, clicking links and buttons and breaking them. Uh, I can make it 
developer do that. Like, right, you can, they can test their own code by like clicking links and buttons, but it's more about thinking outside the box. Like, what can I do that's going to break something else if I tested this? So that mentality and in whatever way, whatever project that you worked on, and if you were able to show that mentality, you should definitely put that as a part of your resume. All right, and my last question for me, like, um, are you guys hiring QA engineers, uh, automation? If so, how they ca uh, how people can uh, contact you? Um, unfortunately, we don't have any open positions at the moment. But Thrive has been expanding a whole lot. Uh, I've been here for four years, and I can speak for myself that like when I joined, there were 30 people, and now we are like over 500 people. All like not just engineering, but the company entirely. So keep an eye out. Uh, you guys all have like a small uh, card on top of your goodie bags that says thrivemarketjobs.com. So if you know someone who's like based on our openings, do let us know and it, thank you. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Maybe we have questions from people. Any, do any have any questions so far? Yeah. What would you say is the biggest value that automation has brought to the, the applications here at Thrive? Uh, for those of you who didn't hear, her question was, uh, what value does automation bring to Thrive Market? So, um, I mean, we are all automation engineers or like QA engineers of some sort, so we speak numbers, right? So numbers would be, when we first joined Thrive Market, it was hard for us to do like one release a week because Thrive site is really complicated. I know there's like a bunch of sites, but e-commerce has its own special complexities. So uh, it's too many integrations and there's a whole lot going on. To be able to regress the site, it took us almost a week. To get to a point where now we do three to four releases in a day, and that's all due to automation. Yeah. Anybody else? Any other questions? Yeah. So like one of the roles was like the manager, like Hiring. And when you're hiring, you first you have to address your team. What's your approach to that? For example, like the guy has to kind of tweak it, but the team is growing, you have to make the changes that you have to handle. You don't just change one person, you have to change the entire team to work together, especially when you grow. What's your approach to that? I'm sorry, I didn't catch the whole question. So when you're hiring new people, mm -hmm. you have to adjust entirely, say, automation team. Because you cannot just say one person adjust to that, you have to adjust. Like, what's your approach for that? Um, I think one of the most important aspects of our interview process is cultural alignment. So we hire candidates based on how much they can align to our culture that we have already put in place. Uh, so it's not that hard for them to uh, get accustomed to the team. But at the same time, uh, we have a buddy system in place, which means on the very first day when someone joins, one of the member of the team will like introduce them to everybody else within the engineering because it's a huge engineering or, uh, group. So we introduce them to there and then like we have team lunches and stuff where we get to know each other. We also have very well documented, um, very well documented expectations in terms of what we what is expected out of a candidate who's coming into the company, as well as uh, documentation that they would need to ramp up on. And I think the team that I mean I can say it proudly that the team that we have at Thrive Market right now is super helpful and they would definitely go. Uh, above and beyond to be able to help the other person and make them feel comfortable within the team. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. I think that performance evaluation is one of the like toughest questions. How do you do it? Um, so performance evaluation is tough only if your guidelines are like open-ended, like you don't know what's expected out of you, right? So one good thing that we do at Thrive Market is we sit together and put together a document for you in terms of what is expected from your role, what are your next steps. So if you, if you can accomplish everything that you need to do for your current role, then you have the next step as to like what should you be exceeding at to get to the next place in your, in your career. So generally, it's, it hasn't been one of my, I know it's like one of the major things for most people, but it hasn't been that big of a problem for me working at Thrive. How do you evaluate what 
Sorry. I'm sorry, your question is about accessibility. But to answer your question, in general, how do we look for tools that are useful for us is based on how, how many companies have implemented it, how, how good it is. Like, it's very easy to take a new tool and implement it, but it also adds flakiness into your test, which makes them unreliable, and then developers don't trust it, trust, trust it anymore, and then it just, everything just goes out the door, right? So um, one, of, one of the big things is for us that it has been implemented and has been used extensively and has been proven to be a, a good tool to be implemented and that's when we pick it up. Uh, one example of that would be um, something that we recently implemented is um, PDIF, which is perceptual difference. Uh, every time you're running an automation in place, uh, you're just testing the functionality, right? So if you're moving towards continuous deployment, functionality is not good enough. You need to know if something is not broken on the front end. And to be able to reduce the manual effort, we implemented something called as perceptual different on difference on our web framework, which takes the screenshots of the framework, uh, of the release, the, like the pre-release and then post-release, and it compares both the screenshots. And that gives you any, de any deviation between uh, what it's supposed to be and what it is right now. So it, it was implemented by Google like four years ago or like five years ago, I think. And since then has been a great tool and we, we have we knew that this was a great tool for us and that's how we used it. Yeah. How do you handle external challenges like uh, challenges outside your team? Maybe your product no longer wants to cooperate with you any other basis like that? Uh, that's a very interesting question. Uh, question, but I've never had problem with product. Maybe a developer. Yeah, sure. But like, who hasn't, right? Uh, um, I I do think one one advantage that we all have working in technology is that you work with very logical people, and all you have to do is explain and make your point. So there's nothing that communication doesn't solve, and then it goes back to the fact that we hire people with good communication skills. So it's always like if you can communicate and close the loop, you can always work with anybody you want. Uh, can you suggest some resource for KM Manager to get up with all these, for example, metrics, uh, traceability matrices, and all of this stuff that you find useful like, in your daily routine? Um, traceability matrices is something that you learn when you just get started. Uh, you definitely evolve in the role as it keeps going and you don't necessarily require a traceability matrix. But we also, uh, what we do is we have test trails and we all work off of test plans. Our, our company is really fast-paced, so like you can imagine doing five releases in a day and having to move tickets as quickly as you can. It's, it's pretty hard. So uh, what we work off of is test plans. We create test plans and we have a peer review it because everybody is looking at the same site every day. It's very easy to miss something. So we have peer reviews for test plans in place. So once the peer reviews it, if you miss something, they can point it out and then you go back and it helps you like make sure that everybody's like part of the group and everybody's learning about the feature that this one person is testing testing with. Thank you. As you mentioned, uh, it's very fast-paced and uh, doing releases uh, like maybe three or four times a day. How do you manage to have automation in place for those features and how do you maintain those for the releases? So we have dedicated automation team. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, for those of you who didn't hear the question, the question was that um, how do you keep up with the changes that's happening every day with, in terms of automation? Uh, we have a dedicated automation team, and this is definitely one of our pain points right now because we have, uh, like, we really move very fast. So what we try to do right now is, as soon as the QA starts testing the ticket, and the manual QA knows that this is impacting some kind of site change, uh, they communicate it to the to the automation team, and we have an automation board where they go and create a ticket. So we start uh, automating those tickets based on when the features need to go out. So that way we have a branch ready and ready to merge as soon as it comes to staging. Uh, going back to the 
uh, test plan or mm -hmm. test drive. Mm -hmm. uh, do you guys actually write test cases, uh, in, like detailed test cases? We have regressions uh, written, detailed regressions written, yes, but those are not written as a part of everyday ticket testing. But we actually spend time once every month or so to go back and review our test cases, change it, and and make sure that we are up to date with our current features. But no, every day we don't write test cases. We do write test plans, though. Yeah. Uh, do you test analytics events? Um, yes, we do. And uh, do you do it uh, like manually or uh, automated? Currently, we're doing it manually, but we have automation going up pretty soon for that. Um, we just were waiting to be able to uh, create a user agent that doesn't flag us into our system to confuse our reporting with the just to not not affect our reporting with bots. Okay. All right. Last question. Uh, how big is the team? How big is the team? Um, we have about three, four, including me, four automation engineers and six manual QA engineers. So about ten people. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you.